Okay, we're going to talk about how to create believable drop shadows, meaning the kind of shadow that you can see right here in this document. It is a sunny day and the trees and the brush are casting this shadow here onto the ground. So I'm going to go get a guy, this guy in particular actually, and we're going to put this guy on that path and make his shadow look believable. I do want you to notice though that before I even get into this, I'm trying to find someone whose lighting is similar. It's not quite exact. His shadow's kind of at a little different of an angle. It means the sun is a little more to the front of this picture, but it is in the same direction. As opposed to maybe this guy standing, notice his shadow cast to the right. The right side of his face is in shadow and the left side is what is brightest. No matter what you do, he will never look believable in this background because that lighting on his body is not consistent. So I have my background. I've already brought in my guy and I have already put a mask on. Okay. We're going to take this layer and we're going to duplicate him. And on this bottom layer, we're going to go ahead and delete the layer mask and we're going to apply it because what I would like is just the picture, just the cutout of the person. So same guy, here he doesn't have a mask, up there is the mask. So if I wanted to do things to him later, um, I could still go ahead and make that decision. Um, getting rid of the mask here is going to let me select him more easily. If I take the magic wand and click on the background, if you notice on this layer preview, he's totally on a transparent background. So if I click anywhere that's not him, it will select all of that background. I can invert it to make a selection that is man shaped. Then I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to take the eyedropper tool. I'm going to select a color that is already present in the existing shadow. That's usually a pretty good place to start. And then with a, just a big brush using the bracket keys to make it big, I'm going to scrub a man-sized, or shaped rather, um, shape right here, okay? So we're done with the selection, that can go away now, all right? So now we have the dude, and we have a shadow underneath him, or the shape of him filled in the shadow color. Now at this point, the bottom dude is no longer necessary. I could delete him, or I can just hide him for a minute so I can decide what else I need him for. So taking the solidly filled the thing that's going to become my drop shadow and actually we will just label that right now so we can keep track of what's happening here we need to change the shape of this shadow so that it more appropriately matches the um, direction of the lighting in this document now you know under edit and free transform this gives you a box that you can hold shift you can resize you can squash, you can do all sorts of things, okay? But none of those really get me in the direction. And even if I try to rotate, that is not really the shape that should be happening. So I don't need free transform, but I do need a transformation. Perspective seems um, like a good idea. It seems like it'll be close. And perspective will do some interesting shifts. Um, and think two-dimensional 2D perspective you did in studio and art class. If you click one of the corners, it will widen like he's leaning towards me or pinch it like he's going far, far away or change the perspective left or right. And that's all well and good, but what I need to actually be doing is casting him. I need to, to send it this direction. And so the perspective tool is not quite doing it for me. So we'll just undo that change. So instead of free transform and instead of perspective, I'm going to choose the distort transformation. Again, it gives me the same box. Nothing really looks different except now I can take the whole corner and we can actually lay him right back down. Okay. So at this point I am, oh, we're going to have to apply. We're going to undo that just for a second because what I would like, I'd like to be able to see the man. So I'm going to have the layer of the man visible and now I'm going to still be working on that drop shadow. So if I go back to transform and distort, the box is still there, but see how I'm going to be transforming the shadow 
and not the man. I just want to be able to see where his feet are so that as I change the shape of this, I have some um, frame of reference about where this needs to be. Okay, so we're going to tweak this a little bit, move where the feet are going to connect, figure out exactly kind of what shape I would like his shadow to be, and keeping um, aware of the shape of the grass back behind him. So we need to kind of push in this direction. Now, remember, when we made this, I think that looks pretty reasonable. Um, when we made this, we just filled a shape, um, a selection that we've started with to, shill, to fill rather a um, man size selection with this color. So right here we have some strange things happening at his feet. The shadow does not look exactly believable. It's extending too far here, and it's really not filling right under his feet um, in his shoes how I would expect. So in this case, it is fine to go ahead and use the eraser to just delete anything that is, should not be there. And I can take the paintbrush tool and actually paint in and extend the shadow where it should be. Now, because all I'm doing is just kind of roughing out this main shape, we're going to go ahead and use the paintbrush and use the eraser to um, fine tune and fix as needed these shapes so that they are making sense. So we'll extend, I would expect his pant leg probably to be a little wider there. And probably not as much space here. That distort tool got me close, but it's not precise. So we will edit a little bit here to make that more believable. That's probably close enough for this moment. That said, oh, now see when I got far back, I think right there should get skinnier. So you'll fine tune and tweak. Now, at the moment, our blend mode is normal. We just have this tan color laying right on top of the background. Remember, here is our extra layer. We can go ahead and delete that. We're not going to need that anymore. So my drop shadow is laying on top of my background, but I haven't changed anything opacity-wise. So certainly I could bring the opacity down, which helps see through the background. Um, but if you remember, we've talked about blend modes and that when you are doing drop shadows, multiply really is the best blend mode to be using because what it will do is darken in relation to the destination and where it is already dark it will intensify it. So if I click multiply notice the difference that just happened there immediately. So already that's a pretty believable drop shadow. Notice though we have a really crisp edge happening not so crisp on the actual shadow. Generally speaking no drop shadow is this crisp so we're going to go to Filter and Blur, and then you're going to want the Gaussian Blur. I know there are a bunch of choices here, and it depends on what you're trying to accomplish, but Gaussian truly is the workhorse. This will be the one you go to far more often. This will open up this dialog. You can decide how much blending, how many pixels. So obviously the lower it is, the less blending that's happening. And as I move this up, now we're pretty much obliterating that shape. So this is an up to you moment. We're just trying to decide how fuzzy makes sense so it still looks like the guy but looks believable. So that seems to be pretty okay. We're going to say all right. Um, and then lastly, I'm not sure that at this opacity it's totally making sense. So I will adjust and blend opacity just a little bit to make a more believable shadow. And again, because it is the shape, you could still con come in and continue to tweak. Keep in mind, though, that you blurred this, so if you decide to do any more erasing or painting, I would do so with a really fuzzy brush so that you don't have to go back and blur again. Um, and that is um, how we will make believable drop shadows so that it looks believable, rather, that your person is part of an actual document or an existing document that you're moving into.